Hello and welcome to our another very special episode. Today I again have uh, Brother Victor with me. Today we will uh, unpack Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32, the story of parable of prodigal son. Welcome, Brother Victor. Thank you, Joe. Very nice. Very happy to be here. All right, folks, let's uh, explore this Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. Now, this is a story Jesus tells about a prodigal son. He is talking to Pharisees and Sadducees who are openly mocking him. He is trying to teach them, but they overlook his teaching. They condemn him. For he is sitting with the tax collectors and sinners, and they think they are righteous. By law, they are still entangled in law, although they are miserably even discarded by the law, for law is righteous, and they were completely, completely unrighteous, even in fulfillment of the laws. But yet, based are standing on a thin ice of law, they were rejecting the grace and mercy of the Lord. Lord clearly said, mercy and grace overcomes the law, yet they did not. So the Lord starts telling them that the rich man had two sons. His younger son said, Father, give me my portion of money. Let's put it in the simple terms. I want to go. I don't want to be here. Father says, okay, you do have a right on it. He gives him his portion. The younger son takes it, goes away, far country. Well, he has money. Everybody welcomes him. You know how world is. If you are wealthy, they're all yours. If you are poor, hey, hey, no one recognizes you. You're alone in this world. Crowded world, but you're alone. They'll trample over you. So pretty soon he realizes he's run out on money. People turn away. He's alone. Can't even survive. Come to verse 16. Well, come to verse 15. Then he's poor. He has got no way. He's just trying to find a job. What does he do? He becomes a citizen of that area. He joins a citizen and adopts to that country. Let's say a world, a fallen world, right? Okay, verse 16. He's so hungry that he would even, he would certainly gladly eat what swine ate. Now you folks know what swine eat, right? Swine is an unclean animal. Swine is created to cleanse the earth by intaking waste. Well, come to verse 17. He's just thinking, boy, what my life is. My Father's house, servants have rich food to eat and to spare. Look at where am I. Now, you see in verse 17, he's coming to his senses. His conscience speaks to him. Verse 18, he's ready now thinking in his mind, I'm ready to repent of what I have done. Wrong. I've been prodigal. What does prodigal mean? Wasteful. And I will go to my father and I will confess my unrighteousness, unworthiness. So he goes. Verse 20. Now he's ashamed. He walks very slow, always thinking, what will happen to me? How will they look at me? How will father treat me 
he doesn't even look up being very heavy hearted but all of a sudden he hears somebody running to him before even he looks up to see his father catches up with him embraces him and kisses him oh wow what 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 is happening he doesn't even have a moment to think about it and his father doesn't stop hugging him kissing him with both his hands touching his face touching his cheeks smiling at him you see here comes the truth of just few verses before this the story same luke 15 verses 4 to 6 what did jesus say what if a man has 100 sheep and loses one one has gone astray what does that man do he leaves 99 in the wilderness and runs behind the one that he has lost and he is not resting till he has found the one that was lost as soon as he finds the one that he had lost boy that guy, that, that 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 man is ecstatic he just has a party calls his friends hey look i lost one and i have found it well let's go back to the the story of verse 21 son confesses his father is kissing him but son confesses his sin and says father i'm not even worthy to be called your son with a very heavy heart and falling voice come to verse 22 what does father do oh yeah see you shameless person you took my money and now what happened look does father say that no what does father do what does he say he overlooks his statements his shortcomings immediately he orders his servants hey bring the best robe now what is the best robe you will say oh yeah good clothing no best robe in bible when it is spoken is about the righteous robe what is a righteous robe white as snow to whom it is given a repentant what is a repentant a dead who is alive again and then what does the father do tells his servants and bring a ring and put it on his hand what is the meaning of that and why you see the ring is a symbol of royalty princes princesses royal commanders rulers used to wear rings again you look at luke 15 verse 7 what did jesus do what does jesus say there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who was lost is found you see the joy in father or he found his son who was dead is alive was lost is found now come to verse 23 what further does father arranges a party with a fatted calf and creates a merry atmosphere and dancing and music look at verse 24 further he announces the return of his dead son to life from being lost to found and the joy is everywhere well now here comes a trouble 
and a troublemaker, the older son. He just hears a drum beats and dances from a little far away from his house and is already troubled in his thoughts. But I tell you, he was born unhappy. Well, let's look at it further. And then he inquires from his servants. Hey, guys, what's happening? What's going on? Come to verse 27. The servant says to him, now please pay attention. Servant says to him, your brother has come back safe and sound. You see, servant tells him, your brother. Well, what do you think happens? Verse 28. He is very angry. And he doesn't even want to come where his... Uh, father was or his brother was but his father who's righteous who's merciful who's graceful pleads with him come verse 29 what does he do the older son he boasts about his unwilling loyalty to father Oh, I have been so loyal to you. I have been so this to you. I have never rebelled against you. And he fakes his righteousness. I have been always, well, whatever. Come to verse 30. He shows his utmost hatred. Now, complaints and disrespects his father by virtually condemning his father for showing mercy to his other son. You know what he says to his father? Oh, as soon as this your son has come, you have started the party. This your son? Wasn't he his brother? His servant told him, your brother has come. But he being an older brother discards his brother and calls the father, hey, this your other son? What does father do? Discards him. He was so glad and he was so merry. He still kept on. Everyone merry. Everyone happy. For his dead son was alive. Then Jesus clearly said in John 6.39, Whatever the Father has given me, I shall lose none, but shall raise him up at the last day. Look, folks. This is story Jesus is telling who? The Pharisees and Sadducees. Who were the Pharisees and Sadducees? The older son. Why older son? Because they were chosen in the Old Testament beforehand. Did they play a role of an older son when they had a younger son, when he had a younger brother? The Gentiles, whom Jesus came and showed his mercy and said, go and preach the gospel to the ends of the world. There's going to be a marriage supper of a lamb. Invited people were rejecting them. So he says, go. My kingdom is too big. Bring everyone, whoever wants to come in. So the younger son comes. Repents, right? No, they did not accept a younger son as a brother. They thought they had a right since the beginning. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Deplatform me. 
Think I care? No, the truth will always remain the truth. They always rebelled against God. From the beginning. What didn't God do for them? Everything. These were the Jews who were being older son. Condemned even God, their creator, their protector, their provider. God sent them prophets behind prophets behind prophets. They killed all of them. So come to the New Testament. What did they do? They did the same thing their forefathers did. For 2,000 years, they've been doing the same thing even till today. Does father, do they understand? Father is sovereign. Father loves everyone. He came in the form of Jesus Christ to save everyone. For he wasn't willing to lose none so that all can come to repentance. The chances are still open for all of us. There's no black, there's no white, there's no brown, there's no yellow. There's no poor, there's no rich, there's no tall, short, uneducated or educated. We are all one in Christ Jesus. There's no Jew nor Gentile. The chance is open to you too. If any Jew is listening to me, please come out of them. Jesus said, out of them, who? The ones who follow evil one. Come out of them. I plead with you. Jesus pleads with you. Please come. There's a salvation. There's eternal life. Don't play with fire. You're not going to be able to bear the consequences. Jesus said that clearly, read it again. Do not go into perdition. Do not go into outer darkness for where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Come, we can be together. I accept you, I'm a Gentile. I was a person who was lost. I was a prodigal. I accept you as an older brother. I plead with you, come. I have peace and joy of the Lord. I want you to have it too. I have eternal life. Let the air waves take my statement to the farthest part of the earth. Yesterday I was going to hell. Today I'm not. By my own way I was. But Lord Jesus showed me the way. He opened my eyes. He gave me the sight. I'm on my way to heaven for eternal life. I've already passed from death unto life. I want you to be pleased, brothers, sisters, come. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Then again, you are condemned already if you are not in Christ. Choice is yours. Please. Question is not whether Jesus has paved the way for us to walk to heaven for eternity. Question is, are you walking on it? Mm -hmm. I only hope that this reaches to the to, to everyone. Yes. More to my Jews, brothers. Mm -hmm. 
because this was Jesus' teaching. How loving and kind was it? How loving and kind was the father? The son came to him very slowly, but father ran. Why? Because father, since he left, father wasn't easy. He was always, always, always in trouble in, 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 its, in his own righteousness and holiness, looking every day. Is my son coming? Is my son coming? Is my son coming? He was patient. So is he patient with everyone. I wish, I hope, I plead with everyone to hear this message and come to Jesus Christ. Please. The Lord Jesus Christ went through. You cannot even comprehend. He saved you. The Lord God who knew no sin became sin for you and gave you free gift of eternal life. So that's the only thing I want to say again. I hope this message reaches to people and they turn from their wicked ways and come to the righteousness of the Lord God, creator of heavens and earth for eternity. I'm uh, sure you were blessed by this uh, wonderful uh, video and explanation by Brother Victor, as Apostle Paul has written also in Romans chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. He says, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. So thank you very much, uh, folks, for joining us again. Of course, the salvation was of the Jews first. They received the oracles. They had the prophets and we Gentiles. We thank God that he adopted us through his son, Jesus Christ. And we were brought to God through him who destroyed the middle wall, which existed between Jews and Gentiles and all became one. Thank you, Brother Victor, for uh, joining us again. And God willing, we'll be back again. Thanks. Yes, well said, well said. God bless you all, folks.